everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey gang, what's up? Just Aaron right here, Canadian Looney. So we have so many stars in these committee videos from the Conservative Party. Some of my favorites, Larry Brock, Kelly Block, Michael Barrett, Stephanie Cousy, Melissa Lanceman, Jos Raj Halan, there's a long, Garnet Genu, Michael Cooper, there's a long list of uh, big time conservative stars, and there's a list of villains too, like MP uh, Ikra Khalid can take over one of these meetings, snap just like that, and you never know what you're gonna get from a crazy NDP MP like Laurel Collins in these committee videos. Anyways, the word is out. We've revealed in the thumbnail in the title what this committee video investigation is going to be about. Let's take a look. It's always wild in these committee videos, guys. Let's check it out. Let's go. Dr. Ellis, please, for, for five minutes. Oh, thanks very much, Chair, and, and uh, thanks, Dr. Patel, for being here. Uh, you know, I, I guess one of the things that I would take a, uh, to object to and, and, and find difficult is you know, when you talk about treating diabetics as a physician, you're talking about treating one patient. What we're talking about here is how did a population respond to some measures put in place uh, by this coalition government, which has then allowed more and more people to access those short-acting narcotics, which you find so objectionable, and I believe you should. So maybe you could comment a bit on that, because our job here is not to look after one patient, at a time as yours is, our job is to try to help an entire country, which is in a terrible crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I take objection to the fact that I only look after one patient. It's true, I look after one patient at a time, but there's a cohort of patients that I manage collectively at Inner City Health. It's not just one patient, and all of their well being is actually important to me. Um, and therefore, the uh, treatment approach that I use is really not that different from the infrastructure of diabetes. There's a community of patients who have diabetes. They have home care, they have foot care, they have regular clinic visits. There's an entire infrastructure that we have collectively put in place, society, I mean, put in place to help manage them because we view that as an important problem. I think we should take the same approach to substance drug use because it is not a single patient issue. It's not a single entity. It's not an acute problem. It's a chronic problem. Uh, through you, Chair, and thanks for that, Dr. Pell. I mean, certainly from this side, that's not something that we're arguing because realistically, if all we're going to do is give people the, the substance they're seeking, we're talking about palliative care because there's no other treatment for you as, a, as a, someone who uses drugs. You know, over here, what we would suggest is people do need comprehensive care. Absolutely, they do. Housing, withdrawal management, all of those things. But we're talking also about supporting them while they're doing it. You know, and I guess the question is, is you know, why, why would we use the so-called safer supply method when we know we have other alternatives like Suboxone? Why, you know, I guess... How could, how could you argue against that? that? That's my question. I don't know if you are argue, arguing against it. That's my question. Is, are you arguing against using that? No. Um, so, in fact, I do use Suboxone for some of the patients that I actually uh, look after downtown. But that's a patient autonomy issue, right? A lot of people don't want to be on Suboxone because they don't actually necessarily want to stop their entire drug use. I don't want to stop taking a single malt whis shot of whiskey on a Saturday night. But I want to be able to use it responsibly. So as long as they have capacity and they turn down Suboxone, I can't enforce that treatment on them. I understand the value of Suboxone because there are some patients who actually take it and do well on it. So if the goal is to get them completely off any opioid, whatever substance they're using, and the patient actually wants to do that, then I agree with you. We should look at other alternatives than safe supply. But often, the only way to get the patients to trust us and us as an infrastructure of people at the front lines looking after patients is to start them off on, on uh, Dilly, a Dilaudid, uh, to get them into the fold, to get them to trust us. Because you have to remember, and again, as a physician, you know that building trust is crucial. And a lot of these patients who end up on the street have substance use disorders, have gone through horrible life journeys where the people they wanted to trust let them down. And so for us to develop that trust takes time. I wish I could start everybody on Suboxone and see how they do. But the reality is I can't 
because of the individual situation. You know, I guess the, the only other argument, Dr. Patel, is really related to the fact that you and I both know that the opioid crisis uh, was largely fueled by OxyContin prescribed by physicians. And I guess what I would suggest to you, and just for the record, he, he nodded in the, in the affirmative to that statement, my question would be is how could we then suggest that flooding the market with more and more opioids for people to use at their will is going to be a benefit? It, to me, that, that's counterintuitive. It really becomes nonsensical to say we got into this problem, which we agree on, uh, based on the fact that there was an oversupply of readily available, high-potent, uh, uh, short- or long-acting opioids, and now we're going to get out of it by giving people more and more opioids. That seems counterintuitive to me. I agree with you that we need to create uh, spaces where we have uh, relationships with people and things like that. But just saying, here, take whatever you want, you know, th that really doesn't seem to be sensible to me. So I would disagree with the statement you're making, take whatever you want. That's actually not the case. That, that's a gross oversimplification. I think you know that. Um, the reason for safer supply, the reason for safer supply is to try and build trust while keeping the patient alive. If they're dead, who cares? Why use Suboxone? Why worry about dillies? They're dead. It's, the problem's gone. Um, but we're human. We try not to kill people if we can actually avoid it through a variety of different societal policies. This is no different than that policy. The goal of Safer Supply, I'll say it again, is to keep people alive so that we can actually get them the help they actually need. There's no Thank other you. way around it. If we take away Safer Supply, people will die. You're going to have a bigger problem on your hands. Thank you. Uh, and that's the issue. Thank you, Doctor. Ms. Sidhu. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I don't know what we really should think about what we just saw in that committee video. It's so hard to get answers. These conservatives are asking the right questions. We see it all the time. These liberals get in the way. The witnesses are never prepared. They don't have the right answers. I try to keep notes, but there's no sense. Let me know in the comments what I should think. My name's Aaron. This is Canadian Looney, and this is another Wild Committee investigation video. There are so many of them under this Trudeau, NDP, Jagmeet, uh, Liberal coalition government. It's a total farce. We need an election. That's it. There's no more to say about that. We just need an election. Hopefully, we'll get one. My name's Aaron. Like, subscribe, share, get notified, all those fun things. Please leave a comment. Love the comments. Check your next video. Thank you for watching this one. Remember to get notified for the live shows. That's worth a look. Our live shows and getting involved in the chat room. It's a good experience. Come check it out. That's it. Learn about Canadian federal politics with Canadians similar to yourself. That's it. My name's Aaron. Canadian Looney. Catch you next video. Thanks for watching this one.